Hello guys, welcome to PGTV Presents Tech View, another episode. And in this episode, I'll show you guys uh, how to create a nested SXI and why you, need, why you need a nested SXI and how you can implement your nested SXI cluster. So let's get started. All right. So This is my vCenter environment. So I have actually three physical ESXi host. And basically, in the real environment, you cannot, you, you never you never think about the nested ESXi, never ever. So when you are gonna think about the nested ESXi, when you're gonna build an ESXi, if you want to test something, if you want to do at your home lab, uh, like say, for example, you have only one physical ESXi host, but you want to create a cluster with five ESXi hosts. So what do you think? You're gonna, you're gonna buy five physical server? It's gonna cost you a lot of money, right? And also a lot of stuff in VMware, you cannot do the practice without the physical hardware. So how are you gonna do the practice? So for just, for practice, you can create a virtual machine on top of the virtual machine, you can install ESXi. That's called a nested ESXi. But nested ESXi has some requirement. I'll show you step by step what's the requirement you, you should maintain to have a nested ESXi environment. But again, Again, I just remind you guys, you never think about nested ESXi or nested ESXi cluster in your real field or real environment or your organization. It's just for your home lab to practice uh, the VMR all features. That means if you create a three host cluster or if you want to do a practice with say, you have a data center in Virginia, you have a data center in New York, uh, which is disaster recovery, site so that means you need at least three hosts in virginia two hosts in maybe new york so you need to five hosts and also you can make a cluster you can practice all the cluster uh features like ha drs demotion distributed switch standard switch configuration all those things you can set up with three uh sxi host if you have a three, at least for, for the cluster actually it's required two but i said for the best practice you should have three the reason I said three, because I want you to recommend to practice one more thing, which is practice a vSIM cluster. So for vSIM cluster, you need minimum three ESXi, physical ESXi host. Since you don't have three physical ESXi hosts, how you can make it happen? How are you going to do the practice for uh, vSIM cluster? So for vSIM cluster, you can create three virtual machine on top of the virtual machine, you can install ESXi and you consider those virtual machine ESXi as a physical ESXi and you can add them in a cluster and also you can configure, inside the cluster you can configure um, vSIM storage. So that's why I said for best practice, create a home lab, you can do with nested ESXi. And exactly that's what I'm gonna show you. So. In this video, I'll show you only one. I will show you only one um, ESXi how you can build. And then if you know one, you can create a multiple the same way. And also I have a complete video. I have already in my channel. I will share uh, the video link on the description box. And if you guys, and if, if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel and also uh, share my videos if you think that will is available for you and also it, it will help you and you, maybe it, it can help your friends, your family or maybe your uh, co-worker so you can just share with them and don't forget to give a big thumbs up and also make some comments and your comments will encourage me to make more videos so again if you're new in my channel please subscribe my channel um, so let's get started with uh, build uh, what is called nested ESXi. So I'll show you only one nested ESXi and rest of them you're gonna create. So 
the requirement is any i have three sxi hosts but in your case maybe at your home you have one sxi don't worry about that so just create a like um any folder or something like you can create a folder but since i'm using like um uh, 6.7 so i don't have um 6.7 doesn't have the folder option uh, on the host and cluster view this is the host and cluster view this one is uh, BMS and templates view, this one is storage view, this one is network view, right? But in 7, vCenter 7 and vCenter 8 has a folder options in the host and cluster view. You can create a folder. So you can create a folder means right click and you're going to see a folder, create a folder options. That way you can create here. If you right click on here, sorry, select anything and just right click on the data center, you can have option new folder, right? You can create a new folder here, right? So, but in here, you don't, you will not have any options like that. Oh, sorry, it has, yep. So which version I'm using? Okay, 6.7 actually is update three or something, but 6.5 doesn't have this option. I'm sorry, uh, misinformation. So you can create a folder or you can have a resource pool. It, it, it doesn't matter. And just to organize, you can create a folder to organize your environment. You can create a uh, resource pool, whatever you want. So if you want to create a, a folder, then just right click on the data center. You can send folder, you can new host and cluster folder. And here you can say uh, nested ESXi. So, or you can have a hyphen in between, that's fine. Nested ESXi. It's just for organizing, nothing else. Without this, you can also do that. So I'm gonna create some virtual machine, one virtual machine here. Uh, so before I create the virtual machine, I so for example, I'm targeting right now this one. Let's see. Okay, I have available. This one has available. This one is available. Okay, let's start create a uh, nested SXI virtual machine here on this host. But before I create, I wanna create a separate network uh, standard network port group for my nested ESXi because nested ESXi required a specific uh, port group security. I want to change it for only for the nested ESXi, just for nested ESXi. So that's why, so how I can do that? Select your host, go to the configuration tab and then um so since this is a network you can go the virtual switches and you're gonna see the virtual switch is a distributed switch i can create a distributed switch because i have it but if you don't have the distributed switch definitely you have a standard switch so if you have a standard switch like by default standard switch b switch zero is created so you you can have one network here and also you can create a uh nested sxi um uh, nested sxi uh, adapter here or if you have more or if you want to create a separate one like this you can have it no issues so let's see how many physical adapter i have here so i have two nick card is using two different b switch standard switch and also another two nick card is dedicatedly work for distributed switch on this host so it's my choice, it's your choice. If you have distributed switch, you can just simply create a distributed port group on distributed switch and change. It's up to you. So either create here, is, I, I'm gonna show you here and also I'll show you on the distributed switch. So on the standard switch, you're gonna select the virtual switch and then go add a network and virtual machine port group, nothing else. Next and select the existing one, click next. So you can say nested SXI network maybe or something, whatever. It, it doesn't matter what's the level for it. It's up to you what kind of level you want to use. And if you use specific VLAN for that, you can assign a VLAN. If you don't, you don't have any VLAN, if you are working at your home environment, in that case, you don't need to assign anything. You just leave it like that, zero. Click next and finish. So you see here, um, 
my network is created, right? So I, I can use this network. And actually, I'm not going to use this network because it has only one MIC card, which is using like passing the management traffic and also other traffic. So I'm not going to bother this NIC card. Um, I can remove it easily. Just remove. That's it. Yes. So distributor switch. So distributor switch, if you add a network. Sorry. So for the distributor switch, you see here, this is the distributor switch, right? So distributor switch, you cannot add it here. You cannot add here, but it's a managed adapter. You're gonna see just only the make card, nothing else. So for the distributor switch, you have to go to the network tab if you have. Otherwise it's not a requirement, it's not mandatory you have to go you have to create a port group on distributor switch. If you have the distributor switch, then go the distributor switch. It, otherwise, you can do it here. The way I created, I showed you here, right? Same way, just create it in one end. Okay, so I'm going to create, since I have a distributor switch, I'm going to the network adapter, and this is my distributor switch. And so right click on the distributor switch and say distributed port group, this new distributed port group, and name, nested ESXi uh, network. That's it, next. And also number of ports is whatever you want. You can say 32 or I'll explain what is the 32 means later on. And again, VLAN, if you use, if you use specific VLAN, then use VLAN and then provide the VLAN ID. But if you don't use VLAN and then just leave it like that. Just leave it like that. Click next. And finish. So you see here, my port group is created. Why I created the port group? Why I'm not using the other port group? I can use other port group. It's not an issue. But if you want to use like, what? The reason I said like because you you have for uh, ES for nested ESX implementation you have to maintain some uh, some network security change. So I'm going to show you here. So this is the port group I have created. Either it can be on distributed switch or it can be on standard switch. Edit settings, and then you're gonna see security. On the security, you're gonna see. Promise case mode is rejected. MAC address change is rejected. Forget transmission is rejected. But if you want to implement um, nested ESXi, in that case, the promise case mode is supposed to be accepted and forget transmit is supposed to be accepted. So accept and accept and click OK. So these settings is just need to be enabled for your nested ESXi, not all of them. For all, all of the uh, port groups supposed to have, everything is rejected. Sec for the security reason, everything should be rejected. The same way, and if you want to do on the distributor, uh, sorry, standard switch, same thing on the standard switch, say for example, this is the necessary SXA, right? I already did here, go edit settings and security. You see here, it's accepted and accepted. And click OK. So the three dot here, you have to click and then change it. So this is the network settings. Now we are ready to go. Okay, let's start it. Right click on it. And or you can select this one, right click on it. Uh, no, not actually, later on you can just move it there. Okay, I'm going to put it here actually, under this. Oh, it's not gonna support here, okay. Anyway, just let's say, actually, this is not gonna work out. Remove it, remove from the inventory. Okay. So right click on it, new resource pool, and say, uh, nested, SXI, okay. Nested SXI, and then right click on it, you can say new virtual machine, 
the same way, the way you created a virtual machine for Windows, the same way, provide a name. So I'm going to give a name like nested host uh, VA or Virginia, nested host VA, something, whatever. Click next. And this is the selection and which host? The, actually this host, I have one on this host. Click next. And then which data store? So you're gonna do on your, because you are using one ESXA host and in your local storage, right? Whatever the big size of your storage, just select that. That I have some shared storage here, but don't worry about this. Just your local, use your local storage. Click next. And it's access 6.7 or you can say 6.5, whatever is up to you. Click next. And this is not a Windows, just change here. You go to, you have to go other. And then click here on the drop down and you're gonna see, you can just scroll down, you know, see VMware is access 6.5 or later. Select this one, click next. And the hardware. So how much, how many CPU you gonna assign? So for example, you have on your, the ESXi you're building, you have maybe um, 24 CPU, right? Physical CPU. And logical is, if you have a 24, logical is 48. So it's, in my case, I have 32, that means I have 16 CPU. So you can assign whatever you want, it doesn't matter. It's not mean that you are taking 24 from your physical. All phys all 24 CPU are not gonna be uh, utilized at the same time. So expand it and then change, because I know I have total two sockets, so make it like this. 12 into socket two. Because physical socket is two, and core can be higher, socket can be lower. And CPU hot plug is enabled, it should be enabled. So on the fly, whenever the server is running, if you need to increase your CPU, you can increase it. If you have a check mark on here. I explained it to the, my other video the same way. This is like how you're gonna create a virtual machine. Okay, so memory. I have a, a huge amount of memory on this host. So I can say I'm gonna assign um, say 32 gigabyte of memory. So don't worry about your total physical. If, if you have, if you have a total 128 gig of memory, 32, 32, 32. If you create five, it it doesn't matter because you are not utilizing 32 at the same time, right? You are just assigning. It's not utilizing, assigning and utilizing two different things. Okay, and then just do the same thing enable and now new hard disk so for esx installation it's going to consume four gigabyte of total space and if you reserve 10 gigabyte that's enough that's enough for running esxi and we are creating this nested esxi because of what like just to do the practice right nothing else just to understand how it's to work and we have another plan actually we have another plan. What's the plan? The plan is to create a nested ESX, uh, sorry, BSEN cluster. So to create a BSEN cluster, you have to have a three partition in each physical ESXi. So the reason people use BSEN because whenever you purchase a, a physical server and physical server come up with sometimes 10 terabyte of storage. So if you use SAN storage, what are you gonna do with your 10 terabyte local storage? So if you have a, say five ESXi host, each host has a 10 terabyte, that means five host has total 50 terabyte as a local storage and it's not utilized. Why? Because you, you don't gonna build any virtual machine on a local storage, right? Because you have a SAN storage, maybe you have a NAS storage, share storage, and also VMware all the time, VMware recommend, to use the SAN storage, share storage, to configure like um, uh, VMware uh, high availability or cluster, right? So then why are you gonna waste your local 50 terabyte? 
So that's why BMR come, come up with a plan and they release a software called BSEN. So they added a feature actually, not software, it's they added a feature on the ESXi. So, and if you have a local storage and if you want to utilize your local storage in a cluster environment, so you can add all of your local storage together and make up a bundle. That's called a BSEN. That's called a BSEN, virtual SEN. So, and for virtual SEN, how are you gonna do the practice? If you have a physical storage, sorry, if you have a physical host, you have to make a three partition. One partition is gonna be small partition, then second one will be a little bit bigger, and then last one will be the, like add all the hard drive together. For example, you have a uh, eight hard drive. So two hard drive, small two hard drive size, make a um, RAID one and install the ESXi there. And then another partition, you're gonna create a small space like 100 gigabyte or 200 gigabyte for uh, cache tier, for caching. And capacity tier is your actual storage. So all other say rest nine terabyte or eight terabyte for the third partition created for uh, like three ready you want to configure three partition in each host. So I'm talking about in a physical machine, right? So in a virtual machine, how are you going to do that? So you can add simply more hard disk, hard disk, add more hard disk. So think about this is a physical machine. So 10 terabyte, 10 gigabyte, one is 40 gigabyte is enough. So just say thin provision, make sure all are thin provision, make sure all are thin provision because if you use thick provision, then you are going to waste your storage. Thin provision and then last one is gonna be maybe 100. I'm just giving in, just, I'm gonna show you just an example, that's why. And again, I have a plan with this nested SXI. That's why I'm adding three. I'm just adding three store uh, uh, disk drive. But if you just practice only nested SXI, in that case, you don't need. I have a plan not only to show you um, nested SXI, also have a plan to show you some, maybe in another video, how to create a cluster, uh, um, uh, BSEN cluster. So before BSEN, I need to have three drive. That's why I'm adding ahead of time. I believe you understand. And uh, actually I have already a video I'll share. Okay, that's all. And now, you see here? The center. Okay, if I want to change it, the one I created, so I can go, you see it, nested ESXi, LSBD, I can show, this is my distributor switch, this is my standard switch, either one I can use. Okay. But I forget one most important thing, which is on the CPU side, if you create this virtual machine for nested ESXi, especially, especially for nested ESXi, you have to enable this one. You see the hardware virtualization? Make sure under the CPU, you enable hardware virtualization, expose hardware assisted virtualization to the guest OS. You have to enable it. This is another requirement. The first requirement we said, we have to create a standard switch or distributed switch port group. And that port group, we're gonna change the security, promiscuous mode, enable, and what else? Okay, so in this one is a simple, is done already, right? Now I just need to attach, uh, I need to attach a CD, uh, like ISO file. So go to the data store ISO file. This, this is the same way, the way we install the uh, Windows uh, operating system, right? So I have ISO file here uh, in this, ISO, but if you don't have it, you have to upload it to your data store, local data store or whatever you want. And I believe all of you knows how to upload 
as a file to your uh, ESX data store. And I'm looking for 6.7 Bizer, uh, this one maybe, I can use this one, BM or BM Bizer installer. Okay. 6.7, update to season three. I think this is the latest one. So just let's go with this one. Open, okay. And make sure you connect it. Make sure you connect it. And in here, make sure BMR tools. Actually, you don't need this one, BMR tools, because this is the SXS, not Windows. And the only thing is requirement is go here, boot option, and change UFA to BIOS mode. And click next and finish. That's it. So now the machine is created, right? And I'm going to put it on my Nestle SX. I just drag and drop. And it's here, right? Under this. So you can create a multiple Nestle SX like this. Now I'm going to install the SX. Same way, if you click start and say, okay, no problem. And you're going to see within short time, you're going to start installing, you see. So the way we're installing the physical machine, the same way we're installing here. The same way we are installing here. It's not gonna take that long because you are installing in a virtual machine inside of your ESXi. It's not gonna take that long. It's gonna be pretty simple and easy. I know my video is uh, video length is really uh, long because I'm explaining each and every points. And if you don't think like okay, you just need to know like how to like direct setup or configure, just forward the video. That's it. And I'm just waiting to load it. So the OS is going to be load. So this is the installation. Installation is just uh simple so i'm just waiting this waiting time you can just forward like i'm waiting here but you can forward it on the video when you watch it it's almost done okay all right so now it says, this is the installation part actually. Enter to continue. I just hit enter from my keyboard. All right, so F11 for install, uh, installation. So I hit F11. Okay, so now it's showing me three partitions you see here. The first one is yellow color. And then second one is uh, 40 gigabyte and 100 gigabyte. So these two, I have a plan for creating a, but um, B same, that's why I have added. But if you don't add it, it's fine, it's completely okay. If you don't want to implement BSEN, you don't need to add these two. So 10 gigabyte is enough to do a necessary SXA practice because SXA not gonna take that much storage. Okay, and hit enter and then default and then password. The same password, the one you use for your SXA. Now it's scanning the, okay, it's found everything okay. And this is configured to install ESXi 6.7 and say F11 for install and skip for cancel, but we are not canceling, we are installing, right? F11, hit F11, now it's installing.
it's not going to take that long. So the installation is going to take you maybe five to 10 minutes, everything. Uh, but my video, maybe almost one hour because I explain each and every points why you need it, how you uh, like for what reason and what what's the requirement. So that's why it's a long video. All right, it's done. And it says, um, remove the installation media. That means what? In here, you, you attach the installation media, right? Go to the edit section. You see that that's right. So that's what it says. Like take out the installation media. That means if you go, the client device or host device is going to be removed. So come here and enter. So now it's rebooting. And if you forget to remove it, actually, whenever you enter to reboot it, automatically it's going to be disconnected here. The CD ROM will be already uh, automatically disconnected. Okay, anyway, now it's rebooting. So our installation part is done. Now the SXA is loading. After the SXA is loading, we have to configure it. So now, what you have, if you want to configure the SXA management, now we're going to configure the SXA management and this window, yellow and ash color window, that's called um, DCUI. So ESXi has two, ESXi will provide you two interface. One interface is called BSphere Host Client, which is you can, whenever you browse it through a browser, Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, or Internet Explorer, whatever the browser, you use directly log into the ESXi host, that's called a BSphere Host Client. And also, if you want to do any kind of change, like management change, network change, um, DNS change, any kind of change you want to make on the host, then you have to log into the this screen. That's called a DCUI. That interface is called DCUI, Direct User Control Interface. And so the first time when you install it, you have to use DCUI interface to configure the SXI management. That means you have to assign an IP address, uh, default gateway, subnet mask, uh, DNS, and domain, all those stuffs, right? That's how it's gonna, it's, it will call the complete installation and configuration. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Installation is done. You see here, I got an IP address automatically, 192.168.1.222 through the DSCP from my, but I don't want DSCP, I want manually. So what are you gonna do? You have to click F2 for configuration. You see here, F2 for customize, so F2, then it's going to ask you for down arrow, ask for the password. Enter. Now, configure management network. Same way, that way you configure your first ESXA host, right? Same way, you're going to configure this. Not only this, all of them. Oh, sorry, I forget to do one thing. I apologize for that. Actually, right now, if you go to the network, how many network? It has only one network. I want total six network. I want total six network. Actually, this is my mistake. I'm so sorry. I'm going to add more network on it. Edit. I'm going to add more network because I will recommend for standard conf configuration, I recommend you to add total seven physical NIC card on your physical host. Whenever you work for a company, and if you are, um, if it is your responsibility to purchase a server, make sure your server has minimum seven uh, network port. Seven means definitely one the server will have, which is for your remote management, IDEC or ILO. So if you exclude the remote management, that means without remote management, at least you should have six. Since this is a Nested is actually, I don't need remote management. So that's why I'm saying six. So minimum six network at a, at a port group you need. Yeah, and network adapter you should have, network port you should have on your physical machine. That's why we are adding more port network adapter here. Virtual machine is pretty easy. One virtual machine you can add 10, but I don't need 10, I need just six. Network adapter, so second one, add. Network adapter, this is third one, add. Network adapter, 
one, two, three, four, right? Four, five, and six. So I had a total six. So two of them, I'm gonna make a bundle. I, I will do the Nick teaming for management traffic and rest four, I gonna use for distributed switch configuration. That's why I leave it like this. So that's why I said for best practices, highly recommend minimum six per network port group, network port like, so click okay. And I'm not sure, maybe I have to restart. Okay, it's disconnected. Let's reconnect it again. Okay. Go back, skip, and come back, see. Yes, I don't need to restart, it's added. Now it's showing, all of them is connected, right? And so I'm selecting two NIC card. I'm selecting two NIC card for what? I'm kind of selecting two NIC card for my management network. That means it's a NIC teaming. And VLAN, I'm going to allow for the management level, I need, I'm going to allow all the VLANs. So you see here, 124094, 124094 is like any VLAN number you can assign if you have a specific VLAN to have access. But for ESXi level, I recommend to you to do 4095. That means you're allowing all the VLANs with enter. IPv4 configuration, go down, select space bar, then set the, when you hit the space bar, that means you're selecting third option, right? Now, down arrow from your keyboard and assign the IP address. Say for example, I don't know, I didn't check, but you, you should check it, which IP is available. You should have an IP spreadsheet. So I know because this is my environment, so 100 number IP, no, 100, 102 is already used. So let's go for 100. 121 or 120. Nobody's using 120. Okay. So 120 subnet mask 255.255.250. Since this is a uh, 24 subnet and this is my default gateway. Okay. IPv6. Hit enter. I'm going to disable. So if he wants to select the disable, then spacebar is going to select disable because I'm not using IPv6. Enter. And then down arrow DNS configuration. Hit enter. And now go one down arrow and spacebar and then primary DNS server. So my DNS server is four I actually. Um, 192.162.1.4 is my DNS server IP. And if you, in, in your case, if it is a different, assign the different one, whatever your uh, DNS server. If you have a two DNS server or use alternate DNS server as your second DNS server. But if you don't have two DNS server, in that case, assign your uh, default gateway as a DNS. Dot one in my case also I have not, not I don't have the second one and then host name what is what should be this host name so I'm gonna name it host va zero one Virginia register host just for an example hit enter and then custom DNS suffix and this one will be your domain name so my domain name is uh, ELS com all right and skip Everything is done, then skip button, and then it's gonna ask you, you want to save, save the change and reboot it? Yes, it is yes. Hit Y, and is now it's gonna be reboot. So my SXI host is created, right? So now it's restarting. It's gonna take a little bit of time. Restart in progress. So again, I'm telling you guys, please don't try to do any nested SX host in your in your real environment. That means in your organization, because nobody do nested SX on the real environment. I'm why we are learning nested SX just for practice, nothing else, just for practice. So because since we don't have too many physical SXI, you cannot practice the uh, BSEN or we cannot practice the actual, uh, what is called, actual um, flavor of uh, high availability or cluster, right? And also 
uh, distributed switch configure uh, configuration with multiple port group that we cannot do if you, if you don't have enough um, SXI host. So that's why we are creating nested SXI through a virtual machine. And it's our choice. We can add more network and we can play with the network. We can we can do the standard 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 level standards like BMO recommended um, uh, settings for standard switch, distributed switch, uh, cluster, HA, DRS, BSEN, everything we can do. So that's why we are creating this just for practice. Okay, my ESX is almost loaded. All right, so I got it. Yes, you see here? 192.160.1.120. So if I now, if I type 10 dot 15 dot, oh, sorry, 192.168.1.120, see here, I got it. So this interface is called, this interface is called BSPR host client. And also this is called DCUI, direct user control in DCUI, user interface, direct control user interface. All right, so two interface we are getting through the ESXi. And now I'm gonna create, you see, this is my DNS server, okay, view updates, all right, no problem. Um, I'm going to create a, Okay, host a record for my SXI on my DNS server. So what is my um, host name? Host VA01, right? And what is the IP address? 10 dot, sorry, 192.168.1.120, right? And use a PTO record and this will be my FQDN at host. Okay, it's done. It's created, right? So now easily, if I can come here and say, I'm gonna create a cluster. So under the data center, you can have a multiple. And I have one cluster here. So now I can create another cluster, um, add a cluster, but I'm just going to provide the cluster name, but cluster required to have minimum two hosts. I don't have two hosts, I have one host. So I'm just showing you you can add it. That's what I'm just showing you, nothing else. So you can add you can add your host here. You can add host, right? Like click here, you can say add a host and say uh, this, right? Dot com and click next, root, and then your password. And click next. Yes. And finish. And license, now we are using evolution license. Um, well, I have a license here, I can assign. It's not an issue for me. Next, and finish, next, finish. So it's gonna be, it's, it's coming. Within a short time, it's gonna be available. All right. So the host is available right now. If you look at here, see, management network, it has two, you see, if you select this one, that's called a, so this is the standard switch by default created when I configure the management network. So management network come up with a BM network, it's gonna be using the same, same NIC card, you see here. So BM network is using only one NIC card, but management is using two NIC card as a team. So how are you gonna see actually, you can have a multiple NIC card. It's not mean that your port group is using all port. You see, this is a different port group. This is a different port group. So management port group is using BM kernel port group. Our BM network is just simple virtual machine port group, right? But it is BM network and management, both of them, both port group is using the same adapter. But same adapter has two NIC card, but it not means that BM network also using two NIC card. It's not using, you see here? It's just using only one. But if you wants to use two, how are you gonna do that? Just click, simply click here, go edit, and go to the 
teaming and failover go here you see here and just override you see so it has a standby mode but if you want to take it up here then you can do that it's up to you standby mode means what if this sneak card is failed then the, this sneak card will act, gonna be active that's called a standby but if you want to add both of them as a yeah, teaming Nick teaming, then you can just do like this. See, now it's using both. So for management, now if you want to change the management, go here, edit, failover. You see, if you want to change it, you can say just like this. Now, if you select this one, see, now, now management is what you only using one. So it's up to you. If you want, you can change it from here teaming and failover so this is actually recommended but in some case you can do depends on the environment you can do like this but if you do the teaming like this add everything as an active so your network suicide if they do the same way then you'll get it like right now you add it maybe one one now you see here management and BM network, right? Both are using two NIC card. So that means maybe one BM, if you have a two BM here on this network, one BM net, uh, traffic maybe goes to this, another BM traffic goes to this. But none of them is getting, if you, this NIC card is one gig NIC card. So everything will get in one gig. But if you have a teaming on your switch side, also in that case, you'll get a two gig NIC card. Two gig, nine is say one gig and one gig, right? You're gonna get only one gig speed, not two gig speed. You added both together, but you're not gonna get two gig. But if you inform your network team, okay, I'm doing uh, teaming in my side. Can you do that in teaming on your switch side? Then they're gonna do teaming on their side. In that case, you're gonna get double. Okay, it's actually too much uh, advanced level. Anyway, so you get it like, so this is how you're gonna add. Now you see, you have more physical network Actually, I added 10 gig network here. So 10 gig, 10 gig, two 10 gig is assigned for management. And another, another four 10 gig is available. So this is gonna be utilized by uh, B uh, uh, what is called distributor switch. So I'll show you how you're gonna have a distributor switch, how you're gonna create a distributor switch uh, in your environment. So we're gonna do the practice with the nested SXI. Because naturally, this is pretty easy. You can add more NIC card. A physical NIC, physical server, we don't have that many NIC card. So this is the standard configuration, minimum six. That's why I said minimum six. So I'll show you in another video how you're gonna do that distributed switch. And that's it. So you, your, your duty is to add three more and create a cluster, add three hosts on the cluster. And cluster is pretty simple. Just right click on it new cluster you can say cluster name um nest uh, nested ha cluster well, name doesn't matter it's not mean that you have to have like this whatever you want and i'm not enabling drs i'm not enabling ha i'm not enabling decent right now because i don't have enough host so that's why i just name it and just created it is created now you can just put this host into the cluster is here i just select and drag and drop so now now this host is under your cluster but it's not maintaining the cluster uh, actual cluster because you didn't enable the drs you didn't do that high velocity cluster configuration it's just simple installation is here just showing everything there is nothing no bm and only data store is only one data store showing. All right, so that's all for today. And I believe you enjoyed this video, but it's a really big video, like length wise. Um, but I explain everything why you have to have a nested ASX side. So if you like this video, Please again, share with your friends, co-worker, and give a big thumbs up, and also don't forget to make comments. Thank you, thanks for watching.